Welcome at the Bali. This week, in collaboration with online film platform Pickle, we present to you two film programs in the context of 10 years after Arab Spring. Today, we watch and discuss the Palestinian film Barbahar with Lara Khaldi and Nisma Alakluk. Last week, we organized an event about the Egyptian documentary Amal, which can also be viewed via this website. It has been 10 years since the Arab Spring in the Middle East. The Arab Spring was a call from men and women for regime change in the Middle East. But these uprisings were also a turning point in the role of women in the region. During the protest, women played an important role. Their visibility and strength increased and they broke with traditional patriarchy. In some countries, the protests were direct and visible. In others, such as the country we are talking about, today, Israel and Palestine, indirect and less visible, but irrevocably present. With this two-part film program, we approach Arab Spring from a personal perspective, from the personal experiences of women. Tonight we screen and discuss Barbahar by the Palestinian director Maisalun Hamoud, about three Palestinian women living together in an apartment in Tel Aviv. We have the chain-smoking, free-spirited lawyer Laila, the Christian lesbian DJ Salma, and the devout Muslim Noor, who is oppressed by her future husband even before marriage. The title of the film, Barbahar, you could also translate as in between. And what these women are in between of, we will discuss today with our two guests, Lara Galdi and Nisma Alakluk. My name is Parvi Mirahimi. I'm a program editor at the Bali. Welcome. And welcome especially Lara Galdi, Nisma Alakluk, via Zoom with us today from her hometown, Brussels. Uh, Nisma Alakluk, you are a writer from Palestine. Uh, you published several novels in Arabic before moving to Brussels in 2013. Your book, Brussels Women, appeared in 2019 about the life in the Belgian city of four women with different backgrounds. And also welcome here with us today um, Lara Galdi, independent cultural critic and curator from Jerusalem, currently living, living in Amsterdam. Am I correct about your background? Do you want to add something, Nisma? Yeah, well, indeed, it's correct. Thank you. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, well, yeah. that's nice. That's a good start. Um, what did you think of the film? Nisma, you first. Uh, well, I watched the movie. Um, I could see that there is uh, my novel, Brussels Brown. It was shared some of these themes and taboos as well. Um, and uh, such as like the society, uh, hypo the societal hypocrisy, for example. Uh, if I want to explain it more, I would say that uh, during the movie, I could see, for example, uh, it was her name, uh, Salma, I think. Yes. And she's from a village, a uh, Christianity, Christian village or yes. something, Tarshiha. And I could see that she, uh, she wasn't able to be herself. She was trying to change her attitude or her lifestyle just to satisfy the society or her parents. Um, this is one of the themes I really um, uh, addressed in, in my novel as well. And yes. uh, I could say that um, the non-acceptance of other uh, and uh, feelings like of the super uh, superiority and uh, like we are better than the others or something, uh, this was also addressed in the movie. And you could see it in the beginning of the movie when Salma and Layla met Noor. They saw her, she's wearing hijab, and from the first moment, they didn't like it. And also, Noor, she didn't like them because they were open and wearing uh, for her like something like too much or something. And they, you could see it at the beginning of the movie, but then you could see that they give themselves uh, opportunity to to understand each other and also uh, also to to communicate. And then they found a way, like um, background, to share uh, their sadness or their issues, and it was okay. But at the beginning, 
you can see that they refused it, but then they were accepting accepting it. And we could see this. It's a reflect. It's like a projecting an idea from the pro, from the society we live. We always like that. We refuse the other people, or we don't accept their differences, and we want them to be uh, to resemble us or to be like us. Are there? Uh, did you did you like that the way it was it was filmed? It was done. Did you see some parallels, maybe, between your book and your women and the women in the film? Well, yes, indeed, because I have this also this character in my novel uh, about a girl. She was conservative, and she felt the same way uh, like Noor. She felt uh, due to other girls because they are open-minded and they have uh, like this kind of life style. So from the beginning, she rejected and she yes. refused uh, to know them. But then yes. in the movie, I like the fact that uh, you could see that how they could find the rhythm to live to each together. And this was something nice to see in the movie, yeah. in fact. Yes, beautiful. Um, we, we will come to that. We will come yeah. uh, to these teams as well. Lara, yeah. Lara Galdi from Amsterdam now, uh, from Jerusalem, living in Amsterdam. What did you think of the film? Yeah, so, um, I mean, watching it, uh, uh, it, it gave me a lot to think about. Um, yes. Uh, because uh, I was thinking, for example, about this, um, this, uh, this, the three women and the different stereotypes that it kind of um, uh, discusses, right? Because uh, its receival was uh, something that was actually a, a, a big part of the film, I think, yes. how it was received. Um, and... Um, uh, these like uh, these stereotypes. Um, uh, so thinking about whether these stereotypes are kind of um, boxing in these women more uh, or you know less. Uh, thinking about, I was thinking about it a lot, and uh, so it was generative uh, for me. And um, I think that, in a sense, I was thinking about this um, uh, how also journalists kind of uh, define the women. You know the. Uh, in terms of, of religious background. But I was thinking nobody noticed um, a different um, uh, class, for example, difference. There was kind of insinuation, although that was not emphasized uh, in the film, but uh, it was, it's also, it has to do with the, how we receive it uh, yes. as well. Yes. Um, um, uh, it was also, uh, maybe, maybe what was generative was this kind of comparison between you know, the Christian and the uh, Muslim uh, kind of contexts where it is about conservative, co conservative uh, uh, culture yes. rather than about religious backgrounds, yes. right? Yes. It, uh, the Palestinian Christian family was as conservative as the Muslim mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. women's family, right? So it is about a conservative uh, maybe class um, uh, rather than, or conservatism, uh, growing conservatism, rather than religious backgrounds. Yes. Um, so this was one, one strong point for me. And another was, um, uh, you know, co continuing what uh, uh, Nisma was really uh, nicely speaking about, creating this, that it created this world of women, solidarity. Yes. So they uh, became in solidarity with each other, uh, this uh, shared life, the shared... Uh, uh, living together, right, in one space, uh, um, made this possible uh, that they understand each other, but that, that they also uh, share um, uh, their uh, their struggles together and uh, act. So they act together. Uh, uh, you know, after the rape of uh, of Noor, the they, the three of them acted together in order to uh, uh, resolve the situation for her. Yes. For uh, uh, you know, for the benefit of of Noor. So despite this, their their different backgrounds, despite, despite different their backgrounds, differences. Yeah. So it was putting their strength uh, together and fighting back together. So th this for me was also, uh, yeah, a very uh, strong part. But but do you think that gives a realistic image picture of the situation in a city like Tel Aviv or in your case Jerusalem uh, of these Palestinians? living together, is that a realistic idea? I mean, it's a long conversation perhaps about fact and fiction, right? Yeah. And what a film is or uh, should be. Right? Should be. Yeah. Um, because it is a work of fiction and it is where also these uh, struggles could meet, right? So maybe perhaps they are uh, more um, uh, difficult to meet, the struggles to meet and, and this 
film, uh, this uh, work of fiction makes it possible. So we, you know, this, it's also a fiction. But in terms of, yes, I mean, it is a, it is a quite a, uh, uh, an image of, uh, of what happens. Now, the, the, I think, you know, again, I would like to emphasize the receival of this film, right? Me uh, v uh, watching the film yes. is different from a different audience because uh, the co context is very important. Now, these women live in Tel Aviv. They are Palestinian women living in a context of settler colonialism, yes. right, in, in the city of, of Tel Aviv. And so this creates a lot of contradictions. This is the, I think, the hidden background that, um, that it does not maybe come out to a foreign audience in the film, yes. right, because you have contradictions uh, in terms of, uh, you know, you live in a city which is, I mean, not completely, of course, um, uh, you know, uh, liberal, you know, you have uh, um, you have also uh, different conservative, m even m much more conservative, uh, you know, um, uh, opinions and movements uh, there. But you you live in this, um, you know, the the 1948 territories, what we call 1948 yes. territories for the Palestinians, have been uh, marginalized into village communities, uh, um, a can different cantons separated from each other. This makes the community also uh, more conservative, right? These are circumstances which uh, impose this um, uh, growing conservatism in lieu of, uh, of uh, a, a different identity. Yes. And so uh, it has to do with class, it has to do with, uh, with also uh, um, uh, what, what Tel Aviv as a city represents for the Palestinians living in well, What does it represent for Palestinians living there? I mean, it, it, it represents first, I mean, oppression, yes. right? There's yes. a huge class difference yes. between Israelis and Palestinians. You see her, one of the characters, uh, and I forgot the names, but uh, working at the, at the kitchen yes. right, of a restaurant. The manager. They they the they uh, they cannot speak Arabic yes. in the kitchen. She loses her job exactly because she she chooses yes. to walk away. Yeah, exactly. That so. is that is the situation of Palestinians in a city like Tel Aviv. Yes, and so women also live under um, you know uh, layers of of oppression. So there's a patriarchal system which is settler colonialism. There's yes. a patriarchal system within the Palestinian yes. community. You see that very well in the film. Exactly. Yes. And so yeah. it's it's and, and it's a patriarchal system because you see it also with their mothers. I'm not saying it's a it's it's only men, right? It's it's a patriarchal system that is perpetuated by the context and the circumstances. So they live under layers and layers of this oppression. Uh, yeah. It is you know not only one layer, but I think the you know this the the patriarchal system of settler colonialism is in the background so in these details yeah. of you know this in the kitchen what happens uh, in the scene uh, yeah yeah we get to that beautifully put um this might you you said a little bit about it uh, in your introduction um uh, the filmmaker shows the like also lara says the the conflicts within Palestinian community as well. Um, she so shows different courses, like Lara said, uh, from very conservative to more liberal uh, within Palestinian community. Um, is that something you have experienced uh, in uh, the Palestinian community yourself, maybe? Yeah, well, sure. Uh, I think it's there is uh, similarity between the cities or conservative uh, co communities in Arabic world or in Middle East, you can find uh, a lot of similarity. In fact, I would just like to comment regarding the, um, you were saying, um, if it was realistic what she was uh, presenting in yes. the movie regarding the, um, the solidarity between the girls, uh, yes. each other. To, yeah, I was thinking yes. that it was for me, from my side, as a, a girl from Gaza and yes. a girl believing in women empowerment, uh, I would think it was really realistic for me because she didn't change the society. She didn't show us that the society they accepted uh, Salma because she's lesbian. They didn't, uh, the guy, he was um, already had the same lifestyle as her and they were in love, but, and he accepted her uh, like how she are, she is. But after he was trying to change her because there is a pressure on him from the society, from his family. Yeah. So there is authority on him. So that's, 
what I say, what I was trying to say that um, it was realistic because you didn't see that the this boy he was ended with the girl or no. the family they accept their daughter to be lesbian. No, but at least she showed that there is a solidarity between the girls or the friendship or the sisterhood, whatever. But it was like a minority. It's not like yeah. you cannot yeah. uh, really say like it happened in the often or something, but it could happen also. It yeah. was not sugarcoated. It was it was like in real life. It was not sugarcoated. It was not a fairy tale. It was yeah. presented like it is uh, bitter, bittersweet yeah. maybe. So uh, you think that was uh, beautifully done. Um, 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 but did you recognize something um, of the way uh, people treated each other, like Lara said, within the Palestinian community, uh, you are from Gaza, uh, the way people are oppressing each other uh, within families, within small communities, villages, yeah. Uh, yeah. Was that something that you you could relate to? Yeah, of course, I experienced it myself in Gaza City. But I would say that Gaza City is more conservative, of course. Yes. Yes. Uh, but also it was different um, in the 90s or in the 80s than now. I think people were more open that time than, than, than now. now. Yes, this is weird because we are on 2021 or all this technology, etc. But people... Who, they are getting more close, but maybe also because the border is closed yes. on Gaza, so they are living in an open air prison. That's why maybe people also they don't really meet other people or they don't really um, have this uh, opportunity to be communicate with other culture. This is also one of the reasons. But I would say that uh, in the society uh, of uh, in uh, 48. Yes. Um, you could see that also she brought different societies. She brought Nasra, which is like moderate, and also the Haifa, which is the open, uh, liberate, liberate more city. And also Mulfahim, I think it's this is the conservative village, or I'm not sure if it's a village or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you could see that she also used that. Yes. In, one, in one area, she used all type of uh, people they could meet anywhere in Gaza or in West Bank yeah. or 4 to 8, it's the same. Uh, you could meet these people everywhere, even in any country in the world, Arabic world as well. You can see this. But I feel like people, they like to hide these things. They don't like to talk about it because talking about these things, it's also a taboo. Yeah. So it, you are not free to talk about these things. People know it exists, but they don't like to talk about it and they don't like to see it on TV. So this is why I think for the Arabic audience, it's a shock to see this on the TV. Yes, yeah, it was. It was actually uh, yeah. a big uh, shock. Uh, the Arab Spring didn't uh, really take place in, uh, in Palestine. Um, can you even, in your opinion, speak of an Arab Spring uh, among the Palestinians? Well, let's say that in general, the women played... Uh, uh, role in the Arabic Spring, yes. this is for sure, but I'm not sure if there is a clear impact on women's rights. Uh, it's really unclear, you don't see it. Uh, no. But um, from my experience, it was good for, for me in one uh, sense that I was able to leave Gaza because of the revolution in Egypt, so they were open in the border for a yeah. while, yeah. so I was able to leave. So there is a um, positive impact on me, personal life. Yes. But I don't think there is uh, impact on general on the women's rights. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, because like you said, you have uh, within the Palestinian community, you have these different, uh, well, sections. You have the West Bank, where Fatah governs. Then you have Gaza, where Hamas is in power. Um, uh, do you do you think, do you feel, I ask you both, but I start with you, Nis Nisma, because yeah, you already course, yeah. told us a little bit about your life in Gaza. Uh, do you feel there some, is some sort of contentment with, the, with these different leaders, Palestinian leaders, uh, Fatah leaders, Hamas leaders? Yeah. Among uh, Palestinians? 
Yeah, well, it's true. Uh, there is uh, impact. There is um, impact on people. People try to resist, but it's not enough. And uh, the power and the authority with Hamas or with Fatah, they are controlling, even if we are disagree or we don't like. And uh, sometimes people uh, also um, pretend like they are taking one side because there is always benefits come back to them if they do that. So I don't believe that... Um, like, yeah, the people, they are strong in Palestine. And uh, there is, like, the if they want to share the real opinion in the street, you can hear it. Not like other countries like Egypt or something, people, they are scared to share their real opinions. We have this at least, but it doesn't change anything. The situation is really horrible, still there, and uh, it's getting worse and worse, and there is no any improvements uh, so far. So. But as, uh, 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 you, you say the situation is very horrible. Um, uh, um, why, are they, why were there no uprisings during Arab Spring uh, in Gaza, for example? Yeah, well, people, they are busy with the Israeli and Palestinian yes. conflict. Yeah. So yes. uh, even they forgot the other issues. I and have uh, this really, it's the, taking the old uh, energy from them because they are in prison. So yeah. I believe that uh, people, they want to free their land first and uh, then they will uh, consider other issues. <laughs> the, 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 the shared enemy is more important to, to fight before there can be such a thing as an Arab Spring. I mean, yes, but this has been an ongoing debate in a women uh, a feminist movement in Palestine. I think the, that the, the kind of national uh, case, the strug national struggle, uh, takes uh, priority. But um, the problem is that, okay, so I want to emphasize that this has, a, like Nisma started to, to, to talk about, this has to be kind of uh, contextualized historically. There is a Please. moment in the film where the girls are picking out clothes and uh, they pick a dress and they talk about how there it's it's it looks like a, a, a dress that her mother wore in the 70s right um, you're talking about um, a, a, a a community um, a people who in the 70s and 80s were uh, very left wing yes. were um, extremely emancipated um, uh, were part of uh, world movements, uh, uh, left communist movement. Yeah. And at the end of the 80s, 90s, uh, with the first intifada, there was an Islamic counter movement to counter this, uh, this very spring of yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, emancipation, emancipatory movement. And, uh, and with the, the Saudiization of the Arab world, the entrance of the hijab into the into the Arab world. This also happened in, in Palestine. So we have to put it into context. This growing conservatism has to do with a lot of, you know, many um, uh, um, uh, um, changes, right, in society and outside of, of this society. And that it it, but so in the 90s, what happened is that after the Oslo Agreement, Eckert, the feminist movement kind of got divorced from the national movement, from the national struggle. Because, you know, during communist, uh, for example, or left, like the era of the first intifada where the left-wing parties were very active, women were uh, uh, participating, this was a, a, a very big discussion and debate, how women were participating in the national struggle for women's rights and for uh, you know, uh, uh, emancipation of uh, uh, of o all the the nation, right? Yes. So, right. so it was one and the same. Yeah. It, after the slow accord, it was it it got divorced from each other, and an NGOization, what we call NGOization, yeah. non-governmental institutions, you know, became the the trend for civil to build civil society, and this was divorced. So the feminist uh, kind of discussion and groups became something that was um, marginalized. divorced, marginalized, outside of yeah. a different, so parcelized, Maybe not as important as the, the main struggle. Yeah. And not fight. part of it, right? Like, yeah. it became, uh, you, you kind of remove it. Yeah. Uh, um, Separated from separated. Uh, the, the, the real struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, from, uh, you know, emancipation in general. But I have to say that, that well, the, and the, you know, go, going back to the Arab Spring, the Arab Spring is continues, right? I mean, in Lebanon, what is happening in Lebanon, it, it continues. I mean, it's yes. a domino effect that 
uh, that uh, started and has not ended yet. I, I, it takes you know, a lot I, of time. It takes a lot of time, and I don't think we should historicize it from now. So yes. It's still ongoing, and I think, so there is a very interesting uh, movement that has uh, uh, come up in uh, Palestine called uh, a feminist movement called Talat, and uh, these are women, um, uh, women who are organizing different demonstrations, not only in Palestine, but in Beirut, in Berlin, in uh, different parts of Palestine. And it is a movement that is uh, joining together again, uh, uh, you know, the, the kind of, um, uh, the conversation about emancipation from settler colonialism and emancipation of women. One of their slogans is, uh, um, uh, uh, so, uh, a, a country, uh, a, a free country, a free Palestine cannot exist without free women uh, or the freedom of women. So, um, so I think that there is uh, still an ongoing uh, um, movement. There is a young generation that you can see these women uh, very much that has to do with these women of yeah. the film that is um, uh, again... Um, uh, uh, gra is, that is uh, grassroots again, and, yeah. and you know, not this, uh, uh, you know, still this NGO. Kind no, no, of not in uh, narrative. Yeah. Not in the institutions, but uh, from uh, from uh, within. From community. From community, within. Yeah. Um, but there is this this, well, like you said, there is this this main struggle, this main fight against Israel. Uh, do you think Israel benefits from um, perpetuating um, that division within? Palestinian community? Uh, of course, uh, very much so. I mean, you can uh, maybe, yeah, to think about a case, uh, like an, to give you an example of women in Jerusalem, Jer yes. Jerusalemite women, uh, and how these, these different layers, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, domestic violence against women in Jerusalem. The problem is that these women, uh, Palestinian women, cannot call the police because the police is right. Israeli, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, this would create in the, within their communities, it, it's like you are Horrible. inviting your oppressor to yeah. oppress your, you know, your family, your husband. Your so there is no justice, there is there no... Is no justice. There is it's no justice, it's perpetuated. Sin. And of course the Israeli police take advantage of this and yeah. they are much more fiercer with domestic violence cases uh, <laughs> that have to do with Palestinians than yeah. with Israel. I mean, you know, the, the, the list goes on and on. Of course, uh, it, it benefits, and it benefits from growing conservatism to show the, you know, to, to try to... Uh, within the Palestinian community. Yeah, within Palestinian community. Yeah. Of course, it, yeah, it perpetuates it and, and takes advantage of it yes. constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, like, so, you say Arab Spring has affected women in Palestine. It has... Uh, it has affected their, like, like, uh, like um, ho it, ga it gave them hope, maybe more freedom. Well, not, maybe not more freedom. Um, but could, could, could the story we see, these, these three um, l women um, being free within the, the, the borders of their, their lives, uh, together uh, finding freedom, finding, um, well, uh, their shared spirits. Uh, could this story uh, be told without the backdrop of Arab Spring? Has, has it something changed? Has it changed for the good for Palestinian women? Yeah, I think, I mean, of course, I think symbolically in terms yeah. of uh, connecting to get, you know connecting to other women's yeah. struggles in the Arab world because of you know uh, uh, media highlighting and also the, the the grassroots work of other women in the Arab world it has affected but in ways that you that is maybe in, invisible and again that that you see here and there but, yeah but know, was it can't. was this a, a story like this was it possible even uh, possible before Arab Spring? Or yes, I yeah, think, you yeah, think I it think, was possible? Yeah. I think it was possible. It has a lot to do with uh, the, the the very uh, particular context of living yeah. in Palestine yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. So I think. Yeah. So do you think the film does any just, justice to the situation of uh, Palestinians in general, and like you say, uh, Palestinian women in in uh, in particular? Uh, does uh, does it give a, a real image? Uh, does it any justice to their situation? 
uh, yes, I think it responds very much to uh, to uh, uh, what happens. I mean, yeah. it, it can even get worse. Yeah. I think like one of the one of the yeah maybe it's too light. Maybe it's g it gives a too uh, 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 well we say it's not sugar coated, but uh, maybe the, the the image is too, too light. Mm. It's too too beautiful. Too full of color and 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 hope maybe you say it's much darker mm. in real life yes but in fiction we need the yeah hope. we need to emphasize yeah. we need to dramatize yeah i mean again i think both you find the thing is that you find a lot of oppression yeah. but you find a lot of solidarity yeah. between women in palestine so this is and strength uh, really uh, yeah. um, because uh, women in palestine are also oppressed in different ways they are you know, very strong women, uh, yes. although there is oppression. So I, it's not uh, also, it's very important not to show them as victims only. Yeah. So, and because they aren't, right? So it shows, I think, uh, it shows the struggle. It is a struggle yeah. constantly. So they are not victims that give up, but they are not also having a, 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 a good wonderful, time. easy no. t t uh, time. time. But I mean, of course, it gets worse, and I'm, I, I meant it gets worse with honor killings, and actually what started this Talat movement was the honor killings, for example. Um, uh, but, you know, like, one of the things that I really like about the film, or thought about a lot, is yeah. the, the rape scene. You know, because there's always this... Um, I mean, not like, like, that generates a lot of thought because there's always this, uh, this, um, you know, hiding of uh, yeah, honor. Yeah, it's pretty fierce right? that, she, that she did put yeah. that in a film yeah. and like full frontal, yeah. it was very confront, uh, uh, it yeah, was confrontational. But uh, yeah, you, 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 you think that's, that's a first in uh, Palestinian cinema or in, in, in art, you are an arts critic. Did like, you see something like that critical against own the, yeah, yeah own I community? Think I can't think of other works at the moment, but um, I, there might have been, and probably in literature. Um, but uh, but just to say that you know it was very important that aesthetically, you know, formally speaking, the scene was uh, was not. Um, uh, glitzy. It no. was quite ugly. It, yeah. it, it uh, yeah. It made you sympathize. It, it, uh, uh, you know, because you can deal with these scenes in the very many different ways. So, um, and I think there was a, it, it ignited a very large debate uh, within the the community. So that was very important. I think, and I probably would. A large debate because um, there is no such thing as rape uh, in in these communities because it's not uh, publicly there discussed. is no such thing as homosexual yeah. relationships yeah. there is no such thing as rape yeah. it's a kind of a public secret right it's like you know how everyone knows but everyone is not saying anything and sometimes that perpetuates the 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 action does yeah. does do you think this um this scene uh this particular scene the rape does any good for Emancipation for 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 fighting free for these women, mm. bringing these stories in, into the world. I think sometimes the communities must co be confronted with their own realities, and yes, I think of course. Uh, uh, you know uh, um, it's it's you know sometimes everyone is overprotective of their own image because of. You know, because of the, this is the, also the, a dilemma. It's not a yes or no. Of course, I'm sure the dilemma of the of the team of uh, of the film, because because you know the the audience um, uh, outside of Palestine will see it in one way, yeah. and and, and the within, audience within yeah. Palestine. So so you have to kind of uh, make sure what p previous image uh, there is in the yeah. audience's mind, and this is really I think it. Kind of plays a, a great role in the in the making of the do film. You, but you are you are uh, in the arts. You know a lot of artists. Do you think, um, besides from the artists, of course, you think uh, that there is an understanding that cinema, literature, we come to that, can can has the power to change minds, or 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 perspectives. Do you think with a film like this, it can change? Uh, the way we see our own community? I think it can start, and it has started, a quite uh, uh, 
an important discussion yeah. uh, and debate that, that is very much needed to keep on pushing, uh, right? I mean, of course, it puts people into two positions, but it also reveals, reveals you know, the different positions in the community and, again, conf confronts the, the community. And I think that, uh, you know, the, the work of fiction is very important because, again, it gives hope. Uh, it's not only about... Uh, one, one narrative, it's different perspectives of narratives and possible, um, uh, possible continuations of yeah. struggle, right? Uh, fiction is a, is a very important, to, yeah, like there's a, also an ongoing debate in Palestinian kind of cinema, uh, uh, cinema cinematic producers about f uh, the use of fiction and documentary, you know, this very famous uh, statement by Jean-Luc Godard uh, saying the Israelis uh, took um, fiction and the, the Palestinians were left with, with the documentary, right? You would think the, the reverse, but uh, fiction becomes a very important, I think, also medium for, uh, uh, for, for Palestinians. Telling stories. Uh, discussing discussing uh, this in, inside these, the film. Maybe exactly. uh, mm. fiction can be, uh, well, be, can be uh, easier to discuss, to talk about, because it's fiction, it's not, well, not real. Also, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, Nisma, what remained of, of the arts after 1984? Uh, can you give us an idea of, yeah, being an artist like yourself in Gaza, for example? Yeah, in which sense? <laughs> um, how, is it, how was it for you and maybe for your uh, fellow artists, uh, friends, uh, people you, you worked with, you, know, uh, you knew, to, to be an artist, someone who was free-spirited uh, to work in Gaza? Was there any room for you to, to, to uh, make your art, to, um, well, to, to spread your art, to be yeah. read? Well of course, there is a room for me or for others also because there is a lot of inspiration uh, due to the situation there. And, uh, you know, as a youth, uh, they want to experience traveling or other things and they have limitation. Yeah. So the inspiration or writing is something like um, uh, open for them a door or uh, it's a, like a ticket for the uh, to travel to the world. But, of course, with the limitation, I don't believe that even a female or male, they have the free completely well to speak whatever they want. It's still, there is taboos. Um, so there, there is a constraint. You cannot uh, really um, have fully, uh, um, completely uh, freedom. This is, I think, it's uh, um, impossible in the Arabic world. It's not only in Gaza. Sometimes, I, I, when I would say something, I would not say um, uh, only Gaza, because I feel like we are part of the Arabic world and we share the same uh, cultural things. And also, uh, regarding about the women in general, women rights and the things I think we still struggle from the same issue what, what do you think are the differences between uh, women in Palestine um, uh, and women in the rest of uh, the Middle East are, are well, both. in general the global thing I feel like we were trained to be pleasing rather than powerful and we were like told that uh, we suppose or our purpose to enable man or serve them like you see in the beginning of tolerate the to just forgive their mistakes, but as a woman, our mistakes is a scandal. Yes, you and see it in the beginning of the film. Uh, you see it in the beginning of the film, uh, when she ha her legs are, are, are waxed. Yes, she has to make her beauty or something for, his, for her soft, man. Be soft, stay soft, yeah, yeah. So like, the, this is our purpose, yeah. so this is, yeah. Imagine, let's assume if uh, there is no, patriarchy and this uh, life, how it would be the woman life, she, how she going to think or where or uh, doing, it would be a, a, big, a huge difference uh, for the women, uh, not only in Gaza or neither uh, in uh, Egypt, no, it's all Arabic world, even yes. in 48 uh, for the Palestinian community or, or in West Bank as well. So. Um, yeah, well, um, still, we need a time to do some uh, changes. I believe that it's also in Western, it was the same in the 60s or 70s, maybe, but 
it, now it's far better. I, I believe that it, the woman is not free completely, uh, even in Western, because, yeah, this is my opinion, but far free than the woman in Arabic country, in fact, yes. because there is still a big authority for the man in her life and her choices and uh, these things, yeah. How was your book or your books? You worked on seven books. Uh, you made three novels. How were your? How was your work received within the Palestinian community? Maybe it depends on the reader. Some people, the for example, if I received some feedback regarding my last novel, Women from Brussels, and some young girls, they were sending me messages like saying, "Oh, I can't believe someone writes about me without knowing me," because women they want things but they can't do it because they are um, st stick to some rules in their families. Also, uh, there is other women, they would react completely the other way around and they say, yeah, we are not this whore or we don't want this freedom. We like, they believe that they, they were born for serving the man. So it depends on the character, yes. on, the, on the person as well. But also some women, I believe that um, they like what I knock on, like these topics, these taboos, but they don't have the power to change. This is the thing. And I believe that if we keep talking about these things, people will adapt and they will start to think deeply more and refuse what they received and they just uh, acting in like, like, for example, I believe that um, when you see something for the first time, you would reject it, but when you see it often, you yeah. will adapt, and then you say, you consider, yeah, maybe I would consider it, maybe I would think about it, and then in the end, you will turn out that you will use it or you do it yourself. So this is, I think, the life. Yeah, so your, your, your work, but also this film, uh, slowly, slowly, things are changing, maybe because we, we have a, a reflection on, uh, on reality. Um, uh, Lara, um, uh, you work a lot with artists, uh, you are an uh, uh, art curator, a critic, uh, you are in, uh, in contact with people uh, in Palestine. Um, how is the situation for uh, them working on their art uh, over there? Um, um, well, in general now, uh, with these strange times, it's, it's more difficult. We were just speaking actually before we started recording about um, how uh, how we never meet now we never co can meet in palestine although we yeah, we uh, work but in the same field here. <laughs> yeah. in europe or yeah. another country yeah know? because nisma uh, lived in gaza before and i lived in, in jerusalem and uh, you know we can't uh, visit each other we can we are uh, not we live in cantons uh, in, in palestine so um uh, uh, you know the cultural um, Scene is yes. if we want to drive to Jerusalem, for example, it would take one hour or less even yeah. than one hour, but still it's not possible. So yeah. it's really sad like that, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a very, Bizarre. yeah, it's a very, um, uh, yeah, difficult. These are difficult, um, you know, uh, uh, circumstances to, to also be a, a culture, be an artist, be a cultural practitioner. Uh, because you are cut uh, off from the rest of your uh, community, um, you, you, uh, you contained you know, within borders. Contained within borders. Contained within also, you know, aesthetically speaking, also the narrative. It's always this heavy discussion about what a Palestinian artist, artist or a, a cultural uh, uh, producer is or should um, be. Exactly, or should be. Uh, in uh, you know in in this conversation of of committed art uh, there's, there's the the pressure of always also speaking about um, uh, you know politics in certain ways uh, is it, is it always political uh, art from Palestine is it always p politically um, well heavy with politics or in some way or, or another I mean it is it is always heavy with politics because the it Palestine is heavy with politics. It is. So you cannot yeah. see it. I mean, this it's very important. This is the context. Yes. It's also that you, this is the, the, the 
stark reality of your everyday uh, action. Again, like this, this cultural cut between the different uh, parts of Palestine. Yes. You know, there's a Gaza artist community, there's a West Bank artist community, there's a Jerusalem, there's a 48. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. these, these are the, again, these are the circumstances. So it's always political. You cannot divorce the political. And I think this is the moment when, you know, like the, the labels come. You cannot divorce the political from the personal, from the everyday from All the aesthetic choices, yes. you yes. know, it's, it's, it is about uh, context. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, cultural practitioners live under very difficult circumstances to produce, but there is also this pressure to, to, to produce and to use art um, and uh, uh, these creative um, um, tools that we have to spread, uh, um, uh, you know, um, awareness or... Um, uh, about uh, uh, Palestine as well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. But uh, with Corona, we were joking. I mean, we were yeah. just saying that also it's very yeah. strange with uh, with um, once cultural. Uh, cultural institutions started uh, doing online meetings. And now you know? we can meet. Exactly. Everyone is at a ca kind of equal bar where ev the, diaspora, the Palestinian diaspora is present, the yeah. artists from Gaza are present. All together in one 48. Zoom room. So, like, really an interesting discussion started to That's happen. Really, it's impossible still. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, these strange times. Because usually, you know, in, in meetings with artists or in, at institutions, you would always have the Gaza artists on the screen yeah. right and now and we are all on like screens more now all exactly <laughs> now we're all uh, on the same yeah, level exactly. um, uh, more about being an artist uh, and doing something well fierce and and um, uh, director Hamoud who made this film uh, came under fire because of this film I, uh, we said it before there was a fatwa spoken against her um, do you think that these things help the situation uh, is it helpful for the situation of women or, or maybe you can speak of a backlash, you can get a backlash uh, that focus on, um, on the liberal, liberal, liberalism in the film and then the real message, the important message of the film uh, can be overlooked um, because there's so much yeah, controversy around yeah, the film and the way she, she, she did put uh, her film together. Yes, of course, this, this is a, a problem. You've pointed out a very good discussion that happens a lot with many works, right? So that, that you have to always determine uh, to, to what, till where you are provocative, because then it becomes only about the provocation. Exactly. And it's not about the film anymore no. or the, the issues that you want to discuss, but it becomes more about how it is, um, you know, there's, there's provocative, provocative. You can have this working against yeah. you or you can get this backlash. So you see a lot of discussions actually, you know, saying you, you should watch the films before you even judge it. So yeah. this fatwa actually, what it did is that yeah. it, it created this, um, uh, that people were judging the film without even seeing it yeah. or refusing to see the film itself. Yeah. So, so it's it, it's it's very difficult yeah. this kind of balance for producers, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, they have to um, uh, risk always this, you know, that the the controversy around the work becomes more important, more important maybe than, yeah. than uh, the work. And there have been many actually uh, cases like yes. uh, like that. Yeah, like uh, just recently, actually, there was this. Um, uh, this musician uh, who <laughs> who um, uh, who was filming uh, a tech. Uh, she's a DJ. She's a, she's a very well known uh, DJ, and she was filming in a, a site uh, now a cultural heritage, but it's a it's a prophet. Uh, it's like a tomb of a prophet. Uh, it's a kind of holy uh, site, but it's a heritage site at the moment. And there was a backlash it was you know being filmed and there was a huge backlash and a huge issue uh, around it so it becomes more you know yes uh, and important it happens than, a lot than with the women the art uh, itself producer. so it yeah this is um, yeah it becomes more important than the art itself it's uh, yeah. it's uh, pretty, and again this is why you're faced with this extremely difficult uh, task of or of this judging how to but, to make it uh, yeah. balanced to still provoke a, a discussion but 
Yeah. Not to overdo it. Not to, yeah, overdo it in the sense of, yeah, that the film is not watched anymore. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. And people are only speaking about how bad it is, yeah. how yeah. haram yeah. it is. Um, what do you think, Nisma? How is emancipation for Palestinian women in 10 years from now? Mm. Well, it's a good question and it's a difficult one. Yeah. Um, I'm not good with uh, predicting things, but I would like to. I would. I'm, what I want, or was I? What I hope that women would be more. Let's free. do that. What you hope? What you? What? Yeah. yeah Realistically, I would hope. hope that you will live in their own life, not uh, what they told to do, and also um, i hope the authority of the man would be less and less and less and i think it should start from the grandmother and the mother because they are raising this man in the family and they treat the woman like she's like inferior to man and the, the woman the mother the, or the grandmother they should raise their daughter like they're the best and they're equally to the man and then if we start to raise our children like that they're Equally, the, I think we're going to have a better future and the women, they will really have uh, their own life and their freedom and um, less um, yeah, Patriarchy. Say, difficulties. Also, because also when we want something and we cannot do it, we became unhappy person even we are laughing or pretending but inside of us we are unhappy so i believe that a lot of women they're just living with without a soul because they cannot live their life still so i hope that women would be more happy there in 10 years yeah you hope and to be there yeah. yes yes i i understand but we are also uh we uh i, I think you said it gets more conservative uh, at this moment, more and more enclosed, these communities. Yeah. Uh, um, do you think the, the, the picture you are drawing beautifully, do you think yeah. that's possible? It could reflect to the reality in case the border would be open and the occupation would end it. So yes. <laughs> that's what we all hope, of course. Yes. Yeah, well, well it's, it's, it's not easy to, um, to predict this, but no. let's say that uh, it's not only Hamas. I don't believe that the, it's the mistake only of Hamas because it's not true. Huh? They are part of the, the thing, but they are not completely... Um, it's not completely. So I believe that it should start from the, from the family itself, from the mother. Because oh, the mother in the, our society like, take the role of raising the children and the man just go to his job. So it's not the fault of the man, in fact, it's the fault of the woman. So if you start from the woman uh, and to educate her how to raise her children, I think the society would be better. Well, yeah. Nisma, who, who, whose dominance is worse, you think? The dominance within families, uh, um, um, uh, p family members oppressing each other, uh, keeping it like it is, um, or the dominance of... of, of the community, society, oh, uh, I would, well, you can have all these layers. What, whose dominance is worse, you think? I think the both, because even in case the family is liberated and, uh, and they give the freedom for their children to choose whatever they want or to live like how they like, still there is a pr pressure from the society and still they can't do it, even if the family accepts it. So I, I believe they are linked to each other. You cannot live uh, one without the other. So I think there's a pressure from the society and from the family and both it's really um, reflected to each other. You cannot uh, divide them. It's, it's like uh, connected to each other, yeah. In conclusion, Lara, um, uh, are you hopeful for Palestinians in general and Palestinian women in particular? Uh, you know, we have uh, this, um, what we call um, Palestinian pessoptimism, uh, with, which comes from uh, the novel Pesoptimi The Pesoptimist uh, by uh, Emil Habibi, written in the 70s. And it's kind of like, a, it has to get worse in order to get better. <laughs> you know, when it gets really bad, you know, we, we say, ah, well, it's about to get worse, right? And, uh, but but yeah, then the only way is up. That, well... The Palestine, yeah, with Palestinian, no, it has to further go, uh, where, but 
<laughs> meaning that, yes, on the one hand, it, it has gotten worse already. And, <laughs> and um, you know, uh, um, with an, an aggressive, more aggressive settler colonial project in Palestine, this is a patriarchal system that needs to be uh, uh, dismantled along with, so, so the dismantling of patriarchy is also kind of, it's on women's, it becomes on women's shoulders to, uh, uh, to do this. And you know, it's, it gets worse, but at the same time, actually in parallel, there's a growing movement uh, women are uh, in, in more solidarity with each other, are more aware, uh, are fighting together. So yeah, I'm uh, a, a post-optimist. So it gets worse, because but at the same time, it's a struggle. Yes. It's a struggle that will continue. This is what... Uh, what, 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 what do we yeah. need? What, what, do, what, what, do, uh, what, what do the Palestinian women need to, to, in order to... to, to, to uh, rise up? Yeah, this is a difficult question. I mean, um, they, again, they, you're, you're speaking about uh, very strong women, so it's also about our expectations of what emancipation is or our image uh, of freedom. And uh, because, you know, women also need to decide what is freedom for them or what is <laughs> emancipation for them. It is not necessarily uh, one image of freedom. And I think this film actually is very, I mean, although, you know, a lot of discussion about how Noor is gradually becoming, you know, more liberal, but this is liberal in the market, in the market uh, kind of uh, um, uh, definition of being yeah. liberal. You know, you, I, I, Taking I, I off have her, her scarf. who have scarves who are much more emancipated yes. than I am. I mean, uh, so, so what does it mean to be emancipated, right? I mean, econ speaking about econ e economy, I mean, women, uh, the, the women in the workforce <laughs> are maybe uh, at a higher percentage than many other countries in the in the world. In Palestine. In Palestine, uh, because they are forced also because of the context that that uh, that we live in. Um, so, so it's also about you know uh, fine tuning our yes. uh, this, you know discussion about what emancipation. Uh, is yes. and again, it's it's about that it becomes on our shoulders to dismantle these patriarchal um, uh, systems of uh, you know in in these different layers because that oppresses again patriarchal system is not it's not uh, men only it's men, men and women it's a patriarchal yes. like system. Nisma said exactly so doing it to um, our to to each other and yeah. ourselves so but yeah in a sense that power needs to be taken it's never given away so it's a long struggle. Uh, it's it's a long, yeah, struggle ahead. <laughs> ahead yeah. Um, well, wow! Thank you both so much for sharing your thoughts with us, with me, and um, well, it's it's great to talk to you both about this very compl very complicated uh, subject, um, many layers, um, and um, well, as you both uh, um, are told. Uh, the situation of Palestinian women in an Israeli city against the backdrop of Arab Spring. Uh, well, as I said before, you can watch the film uh, online via the Pickle website and uh, check out Bali TV as well for more interesting talks. My name is Parvi Mirahimi. I was here tonight with Lara Gaudi and in Brussels, Nisma Alakluk. Thank you both so much. Thank you for watching and, uh, well, see you next time. I don't want to hear you speak in Arabic. How did I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.